flying through the sky, racing through trees, capturing beautiful videos from above. It's all possible with FPV drones. But where do you even get started? What do you need to know to take your first flight? Have you ever seen a video like this? In Citrus Springs, Florida, host of the fourth edition of the DGP Championship here. Today, we'll be going over how to get into the hobby of FPV drones. Stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Master Anun FPV, but my name is AJ and I started flying drones in March of 2024. I know how absolutely overwhelming it is to get into this hobby, so hopefully I can help you get started. There's only five essential steps to get you in the air, so let's get started with number one. first step of learning how to get into FPV drones is actually learning how to fly, of course. The best way that you can do that without breaking the bank is get an FPV simulator. These programs let you practice the control and the feel of the drone without risking your wallet in a real crash. Now there is a lot of simulators out there, so I made a short list for you so you can pick, and you don't have to choose just one. If you're a gamer, you can get started today by plugging your controller into your computer and hopping on the simulator. Let's take a look and see which ones you should try. So we're gonna start out by talking about FPV Skydive, which is a free sim on the Steam store. When we take a look at the free version, you can see it is incredibly limited because they want you to pay. Real quick, let me preface with saying I apologize for that terrible video quality because I have a MacBook Pro from 2019 that had the Intel i9 chip and they are notorious for overheating and all kinds of issues, so I can't take advantage of any good graphics. Now, FPV Skydive is a great sim to start out on because it's better than nothing, but I don't think many people come back to it once they upgrade, and I'm gonna tell you why. That would be because of the physics. This sim feels entirely too floaty, which means that the drone just does not feel like it's being affected by gravity, which is a huge issue when you're trying to learn how to deal with gravity. Now, as I said before, this sim is indeed better than nothing, but why don't we take a look at some better alternatives? The first paid simulator recommendation I have for you is the Drone Racing League Sim, and that is because of how wonderful the tutorial system is. Now, unfortunately, the tutorial is the best part of this simulator because the physics are kind of iffy and the whole sim feels more like a game than a real training simulator. That's not at all to say that it's not enjoyable because I must say I did have fun on that balloon popping mission once I actually got it down. Now there's an absolutely enormous amount of customization options in the menus, so you can have fun as your heart desires. There's a good amount of maps available, as well as a lot of race options so you can try to beat your best time. Overall, I think for $10, you're getting a really good bargain for the simulator. My third and final simulator recommendation is going to be the Uncrashed FPV Simulator, which is by far my favorite. My favorite part about the simulator is the fact that you can chase drift cars, which is the entire reason I got into this hobby to begin with. On top of that, you can practice your racing, your freestyle tricks, or even hit small gaps. I found Uncrash to be a very good all around simulator that can run on a less powerful machine. So if you're in the same struggle boat as I am, get Uncrashed. Now that you've finally gotten comfortable on the simulator, it's time to get some stuff. But where do you begin? There's so much stuff to choose from, so many options out there. How do you know what's right for you? My personal recommendation is that every beginner pilot starts with an analog video feed, and I'll tell you why. If you start with that digital picture, you're never gonna wanna switch to analog. You're just gonna be spoiled. It's as simple as that. I'm sorry to call it like it is. A lot of digital pilots see analog as caveman technology, but it works all well enough for me. Yes, you might not have that 720p clear image in your goggles or that 1080p clear image in your goggles, but you'll be all right. That just makes the upgrade to digital all the more dramatic. When getting your first set of gear, you've got two options. One, you can go with the ready to fly kit that has everything you'll need in it to get started. Or two, you can build your own ready to fly kit with higher quality items for around the same price. It's up to you. The ready to fly kit we're taking a look at is the Emax Tiny Hawk 3 Plus Freestyle Kit, which I recommend to anybody who's gonna be flying outside because this thing freaking rips. Even though I had already bought a TX-16S, this ready to fly kit is what got me in the air all the way at the beginning. This kit has absolutely everything you need to get off the ground, including the controller, goggles, drone, charger, and two batteries, which will just get you one flight. So make sure you get some extra packs. 
As impressively as this little drone flies, that's not my favorite thing about it. My favorite part is how resilient this little beast is. You can crash it into a wall, crash it into metal poles, and it'll get right back up and keep flying. You might have to bend a prop, but that'll be just about it. Except for that one time I cracked the frame. If you order this kit through Amazon like I did, I would heavily recommend the protection plan on it because if something goes wrong, you can just send it back. And Amazon's return policy is good anyway, so if it's not right out of the box, send it back. The only thing that you have to do when you get it is unlock the VTX and after that you are good to go and you're good to fly. If you need a video on how to unlock the VTX, check out my channel. The E8 transmitter does feel like a little cheap toy, but it gets the job done and that's all you're looking for when you're getting into the hobby. It'll definitely be the first part of this kit that you upgrade though. Well, we just went over my recommendation if you want a ready to fly kit, but what if you want to build your own? What steps do you need to take to do that? Quick disclaimer, I'm not associated or affiliated with Radio Master in any way, shape, or form. They just make good stuff. That's it. The first thing that you're going to have to get is going to be a remote. This here is the Radio Master Pocket that comes in a ton of color varieties. You've got the Radio Master Boxer, which is the mid-size remote that they offer. And this here is the TX16S, which is the full-size big bad boy that is honestly a bit overkill for FPV. But when I started the hobby, I knew I would get in the planes later. So buy once, cry once, you know? By the way, get used to hearing that. It's the name of the game in FPV. You buy it one time, spend a lot of money, and then it works and you're good. You'll be mad about it that one time. If you buy something that's trash and you have to keep buying a new one, you're gonna cry multiple times. So buy once, cry once, be smart, make a good investment, and take care of your things. Next up, we're gonna talk about goggles. Now, these here are the Emacs Transporter 2s, and they are my main recommendation for anybody looking to get into FPV. Because once you upgrade these goggles, you can still use the monitor for desk work. Like, isn't that lovely? I keep this on the desk at all times, so when I'm working on quads, I can see. It's beautiful. Once you upgrade, it's you still have a use for it. You don't have to get rid of it. If you've got a bit of a higher budget, you can go with the SkyZone Cobra X goggles that have a much better DVR quality if you're looking to post your footage. Now that you've got your controller and goggles, you're gonna need a drone to fly, but where should you start? It all depends on what your intentions are. Do you wanna only fly inside, only fly outside, or a little bit of both? I wouldn't recommend starting out with something like a five inch because they have so much power and they can be unsafe, so we're sticking with whoops this video. If you're gonna be sticking to flying inside, then I recommend the Beta FPV Meteor 65 Pro. This frame is incredibly resilient. Like, I'm not even making that up, nothing. Now these 65 class whoops are incredibly light, so if you crash into something, it won't do too much damage. But that's also a negative because you can't really fly them outside in the wind. That's where we take a look at the Beta FPV Meteor 75 Pro, a 78 millimeter tiny whoop. Just to compare, this is a Meteor 75 and this is a Meteor 75 Pro. They added an extra three millimeters to the wheelbase, so instead of using 40 millimeter props, they could use 45. The extra 5mm in props combined with the 1002 motors instead of the 0802s make it a very, very fun 1S whoop to fly. What about you guys that only want to fly outside? What should you get? The Happy Model Mobula 8, pardon the mess, this one got run over and my other one is currently deconstructed because I broke the camera. The Mobula 8 by Happy Model is a wonderful 2S tiny whoop. I can't even call it a tiny whoop. It's a wonderful 2S whoop has amazing performance, it, it flies phenomenally, but the frames are fragile, and I guess I should have to say that the cameras are fragile too, as I have broken one. So, that's something to look out for. This being an 85 millimeter 2S has an extremely different world of performance when you're comparing it to the Meteor 75 Pro, so I really don't think it's a fair comparison, but it does fly much better if you're gonna fly outside. I wouldn't recommend this one if you're flying inside because while you can operate it on 1S, it's sluggish and heavy and just, it doesn't perform well. So if you're flying inside, 
just go 1S. The next thing on the purchase list is gonna be a charger. Now you wanna make a good investment because LiPo safety is incredibly important. You need to have a charger that you can have your faith in. I recommend the V-Fly Whoop Store 3 for 1S Tiny Whoops, and they have the Tooth Store for 2S Whoops. There's no other recommendations. Go with this brand. They work very well. They're not expensive, under $40 a piece. I've got three of the Whoop Stores because you can only charge six at a time, and that just isn't enough, you know? I can't stress enough how important LiPo safety is, so make sure you check out Joshua Bardwell explaining how to properly take care of lipos. I'll make sure to have that video linked in the description. The last thing you're gonna have to buy is batteries. The most important part of learning to fly FPV is stick time. And you can't do that if you get to a location and you can only fly three times before you have to go home. The two quads in the Meteor series come with two batteries apiece, as well as a little USB charger, but I would still recommend upgrading to get that better charger. The Mobula 8, however, doesn't come with any batteries, so you have to go out and pick some. It's recommended to use a range of 450 to 550 milliamp hours. Just to quickly go over LiPo safety, safe charging is a maximum of 4.2 volts for a LiPo battery or 4.35 volts for an LIHV cell. The battery is discharged once it's reached around 3.3 to 3.5 and storage voltage is around 3.8 to 3.9. Make sure you're taking proper care of your batteries to ensure safety and longevity of the battery life. The fifth and final step to learning to fly an FPV drone is just getting out there and flying. If you really thought there was gonna be a number five, joke's on you, buddy. Get out there and fly. Go have a good time. FPV is so addicting, and there's so many different ways that you can express your creativity, whether that's freestyle, filming, or just cruising around. That's all you need to know how to get started with FPV. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, Leave a comment, let me know what videos you want me to make in the future. This was my first real long form video with all the editing. It was incredibly stressful. I, they, I ain't built for this, man. I was a photographer, not a videographer. Now I gotta be a videographer. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I really enjoyed making it for you. I put over 20 hours of work in, which sacrificed a lot of time with my lady. Baby, I'm sorry, I miss you. I love you so much. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in. Y'all be safe, drink some water. And I'll catch you in the next one. What are you doing just watching a black screen? Go watch a JB video. Go learn something today.